Tafelmeyer Retainer, Assembly Placement and Removal. In order to prepare and place our Tafelmeyer matrix system, we will need the following materials and supplies. Our PPE, a basic setup, a 110 pliers, this is also known as the Howe pliers, a ball burnisher with the paper pad, our matrix bands, our Tafelmeyer retainer, and an assortment of wedges. If we are going to be using an extension matrix band, we should also have some scissors out in case we need to adjust a proximal extension. Matrix bands are made of thin, flexible stainless steel material, and they are available in varying thicknesses or gauges and shapes and materials. There are two designs of the matrix band, the universal band and the extension band. The universal band is used when the proximal box is prepared to a minimum depth and width and the cusps are intact. The extension band is also referred to as the MOD band or the subgingival band. This band has two small humps that are placed in approximately for deeper preparations. The extension band works well for preparations that are more extensive and require gingival extensions to compensate for the loss of the cusp. The two ends of the matrix band are designed to come together to form a circle and fit around the tooth. The band is slightly curved so that when it is folded to form a loop, there is a larger circumference on one edge and a smaller circumference on the other. The smaller circumference of the band is always positioned toward the gingiva. The larger circumference of the band is positioned on the tooth facing the occlusal aspect of the tooth. A wedge is used to hold the matrix band firmly against the gingival margin of the preparation and to prevent overhangs. Wedges are made generally of plastic or wood and generally they're triangular in shape. They are placed from the lingual through the embrasure. Wedges are necessary whenever a tooth's proximal surface is being restored against the proximal surface of an adjacent tooth. If no adjacent tooth is present, then no wedge is necessary. The Tafelmeyer retainer holds the matrix band in place around the tooth and tightens the band around the tooth. We will be using a straight retainer. The straight retainer is positioned from the buccal surface of the tooth that is being restored. Refer to your textbooks to review the parts and functions of the universal retainer. Before we begin, we will need to wash our hands and place our PPE. Place the middle of the band on the paper pad and burnish the inner surface of the band with a ball burnisher. Burnishing is done so that the final restoration will have proper contact with the adjacent teeth. Once the matrix band has been burnished, we can identify which guide slots to put our band through. If we are restoring a tooth that's in the mandibular right quadrant or the maxillary left quadrant, we will use the left guide slots. If we are working on the mandibular left quadrant or the maxillary right quadrant, we will use the right guide slot. Since number 19 is in the mandibular left quadrant, we will use the right guide slots. Hold the retainer so that the diagonal line slot is visible. Turn the outer knob clockwise until the end of the spindle is inside the vise. Turn the inner knob counterclockwise until the vise is moved up next to the guide slots and the retainer is ready to receive the matrix band. Identify the occlusal and gingival aspects of the matrix band and bring the ends of the band together to form a loop. Here we see that this is the larger of the two circumferences. This will go be placed toward the occlusal. On the other side we see a smaller circumference. This is going to be placed toward the gingiva of the um, tooth. Place the occlusal edge of the band into the retainer first and then guide the band between the correct guide slots. 
And so we're using the right guide slots because we're going to be working on tooth number 19. So here we see the smaller perimeter or circumference of the band. This will be um, going toward the gingiva. And on the other side, we see the larger circumference. This will be placed toward the occlusal. The gingival uh, side of the band is always placed toward the guide slots. Check that the band is correctly placed inside of the retainer and then secure the band by turning the outer knob clockwise. Once the band is secure, you can use the handle of a mouth mirror to open and round the loop of the band. Finally, adjust the size of the loop to fit the selected tooth using the inner larger knob. The size of the loop should be slightly larger than the tooth being restored. So here we're going to move the inner knob counterclockwise. And this gives us more room to go around the uh, molar. I'm gonna use this to adjust the loop again. Slide the matrix band around the tooth so that the retainer is positioned on the buccal aspect. If you have a hard time sliding one of the proximal areas between the teeth, try placing a wedge first to slightly separate the two teeth. Tighten the band around the tooth by holding the band securely and turning the inner knob clockwise. Ensure that a fully seated band completely seals the gingival area of the preparation to prevent amalgam from escaping during condensation. Notice that around here, this outer knob should be around the patient's lips. Now that that's placed, we can use a ball burnisher to burnish the band against the adjacent tooth. Once the band is seated, um, you should note that there should be about a millimeter above the marginal ridge of the adjacent teeth. And you can see that this band um, extends above the adjacent tooth's marginal ridge. So now that the retainer and band have been placed, we are ready to place our wedges. I am using the cotton forcep or cotton pliers to place the wedge. Another option here is to use the 110 pliers or how pliers. So I'm going to use the back side of the cotton forcep to press the wedge. So after your wedge has been placed, uh, again check the gingival margin with an explorer to ensure that there's a tight seal. The goal here is to create a seamless transition where the tooth and the restoration meet. Um, and so pay special attention to that because improper band placement or wedge placement can result in overhangs. And you can read in your book more about what happens if there's improper band or wedge placement. At this point, the amalgam procedure would take place and the matrix system is ready to be removed. Start by removing the wedge. The wedge can be removed with the 110 pliers or the howl pliers. Hold the band securely in place while slowly turning the outer knob of the retainer in a counterclockwise direction. Use the cotton pliers and carefully spread open the ends of the matrix band and lift the matrix band and using a seesaw motion. Make sure that you discard the used matrix band in the sharps container.